Good afternoon, everyone. It is Friday again, and as I have been doing these past few weeks, I would like to share with you today some words of encouragement from the Scripture. And uh, since I read in my devotions yesterday uh, from Psalm 46, I thought that I would share that passage of Scripture with you today, one of my very favorite passages of Scripture. In times of trouble, times when we need help, uh, this is a great uh, passage for us to focus our attention on. I was going to record out on my deck today, but it's raining. Uh, I, I actually uh, tried to make the recording out on my deck, even though it was coming down softly, but uh, the sound of the rain was just a little too loud, so I moved inside. But uh, we have another beautiful day the Lord has given to us today, and let's take some time right now to focus on what he would have to say to us today in his word. I'm going to read the whole psalm, Psalm 46, and then just make a few comments about it. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore will not we fear, though the earth be removed, and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof, Selah. There is a river, the streams whereof shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacles of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her, and that right early. The heathen raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Selah. Come, behold the works of the Lord, what desolations he hath made in the earth. He maketh wars to cease unto the end of the earth. He breaketh the bow, and cutteth the spear in sunder. He burneth the chariot in the fire. Be still, and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Well, this is a psalm that uh, really uh, is a very interesting psalm. If you think about what the psalm is talking about, I believe the ultimate fulfillment of this psalm will be during the tribulation and even in the millennial kingdom, talking about how God will come to the defense of his people and uh, how he will call, cause wars to cease uh, in the ends of the earth, uh, the, that when the Lord Jesus comes, he'll bring an end to uh, war on earth. There'll be a time of world peace as he rules and reigns for a thousand years and comes to defend uh, the people of Israel. And, uh, uh, and so <clears throat> if you've ever read in the, in the book of Revelation about the time of the tribulation and the battle of Armageddon, you know that that is going to be a very tumultuous time upon the earth. That's going to be a time of global upheaval. It's going to be a time when... Uh, when nothing is going to be normal on planet Earth. Right now, we feel like nothing is normal on planet Earth because we're going through this pandemic of the coronavirus, but this is, not, this is nothing compared to the types of global tribulation uh, that will take place uh, during that period of time. And, of course, ultimately, that will end with the return of the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will come and fight on behalf of his people in the city of Jerusalem and save them. Uh, from the armies of the Antichrist and establish uh, his kingdom upon the earth. Uh, but uh, the psalm here really is, uh, is written, if we understand it correctly, it's written for a time of tumult and trial and difficulty on the earth, such as uh, we have never seen before. And so I think we can find some words of comfort here today for us in our time of need. I just really want to focus on the first couple verses of the psalm and then the last couple verses and uh, I want to start out by considering the truths about God that we see in verse 1. It says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God is our refuge and our strength. You know, that's kind of like saying he is our defense and he is our offense. He is, first of all, a place where we can find shelter. We, we can find a refuge in times of difficulty. You know, right now, lots of us are kind of sheltering at home. We're finding a refuge at home to, uh, to keep us healthy and, and to keep us from contracting the COVID-19. Uh, but God is 
our, our ultimate refuge in all times of difficulty. Uh, he is our hiding place. He is our real security. He is our real safety. He is the one who spreads his wings over us and shelters us under that shadow of the Almighty. Uh, so he is our, our defense, our defender, our refuge, but he's also our strength. He is the one that gives us power. It gives us strength, gives us the ability to do what it is that he wants us to do. When we're feeling like we're running on fumes, when we don't have what we need in the tank, when we feel like we are not sufficient for uh, the challenges that lie before us, then uh, he is our helper then too. He is our strengthener. He gives us what we need to move ahead for God and to do his will. And so whether you need uh, power and help and strength to press forward for God or whether you just need a safe place to hide in God, either way, uh, he is uh, your refuge. He is your strength and he is a very present help in trouble. He is our helper. And really that word help, I think, would summarize this whole psalm. This, all, this whole psalm is talking about how God is the helper of his people, how we can count on him, how we can trust in him to defend us and to strengthen us and to deliver us and to protect us. And so he is our help. But I want you to notice also uh, that the Bible doesn't just say that God is our help in trouble. I mean, that, that's a very comforting truth uh, to know that we have a help in time of trouble. And yet God even goes beyond that and he, he tells us that he is a present help in trouble. That means that he is close at hand. Uh, he is not far away. You know, there might be times where we need somebody to help us, and so we try to call, and we just get their voicemail. Or maybe uh, we can't get a good connection because their cell phone signal is breaking up. But God is never uh, that uh, kind of a help to us, okay? He is always near at hand. And you know what, believer? It doesn't really matter whether you can see him close by or not. The fact of the matter, he is. He is right there near you. He said he's never going to leave you or forsake you. Uh, so he is not just your help, but he is your present help. He is your abiding help, your close, closely abiding help in trouble. But then one more word uh, in this first verse. Uh, not only is God our present help, and that would be a wonderful encouragement just in and of itself, uh, but he is also our very present help. And you know what that word very adds to the statement? It means that he is our mega helper, okay? Uh, he has the help and the power and the strength far beyond anything that we could possibly imagine. Aren't you glad that God isn't just a little bit of help in trouble? Aren't you glad that he doesn't just offer us a, a, a rationed a portion of help when we need him? No, uh, he has help for us that goes far above and beyond our need. And so let's, let's be uh, comforted in those truths about God, okay? That he is our refuge, our strength, and our very present help in trouble. And because that's who God is, what should we do? Well, uh, first of all, uh, we should not fear. Because of that, verse 2 says, Therefore, because all of that is true about God, about our God. We will not fear. We're going to make a choice not to fear. Okay? It's kind of like you're saying to yourself, I will not fear. I mean, you might be tempted to be afraid. Uh, you might have every seeming reason to be afraid. Just like the psalm says here, we will not fear though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, Though the waters thereof roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with the swelling thereof. The psalmist here is describing a time of global upheaval, uh, total cataclysm on the earth, such as perhaps uh, would have happened at the time of Noah's flood. I mean, even if the, the mountains are falling into the ocean and the ocean is swallowing up the land and, and there's no uh, dry place to set your foot, uh, though the, the, the waters are roaring and the mountains are shaking and the earth is trembling, uh, even then, we don't need to be afraid because God is our very present help in trouble. None of us has ever seen that kind of global upheaval. Uh, right now, we're dealing with a global problem with this pandemic. Uh, it's really worldwide. And, and uh, you know what? Uh, it's out of our control, isn't it? Uh, we do not control these issues on a global scale, but we can be thankful that even though the whole world may seem messed up, God is our very present help in trouble. 
and therefore we don't need to fear. Believer, you don't need to fear. You can tell yourself, I will not fear because I know who my God is. I know what he's promised to me and I know he's right here by me and I know that he is my helper and he's never off duty. He's never on vacation. Uh, he's never uh, far away. I can always count on his very present help. So I should not fear. But then I want to go down to the end of the psalm. Uh, another thing that we should do, given these truths about God, is verse 10 says, we should be still. Be still and know that I am God. Now, what does it mean to be still? You know, I think that means that, first of all, we're, we're drawing closer to God, okay? Uh, we're being still before Him. It means we're not just scurrying about, uh, doing our thing as if He's not there, as if we don't have a helper in trouble, we're not relying upon ourselves, but rather we are quieting ourselves before the God of heaven and earth. To be still, I think, means not that we're not praying, uh, but I think sometimes uh, we have an awful lot to say to God, uh, and, and, and when we pray, we're, we're sharing with him all the things that we want him to know, and yet sometimes he wants to say some things to us. He wants us to be still. He wants us to just meditate in who he is so that he can calm our fears and he can quiet our souls. He wants us to be calm and quiet before him. Uh, there's, there's another psalm that talks about how I'm going to behave myself like a weaned child before the Lord. In other words, I'm not going to uh, cry and scream demanding that God does something for me right now, but rather I'm just going to patiently wait upon him to help me in his way and his time. And in the meantime, I'm going to wait upon him and I'm going to be still. So that's another thing that we should do. First of all, not fear. We should not fear. Secondly, we should be still. And third, we should know that he is God. Know that he is God. In that stillness, in that quiet place, draw near to God. Believer, when you're going through trials and difficulties and you're tempted to be afraid, that's not a time to spend less time with God. That's a time to spend more time with God and to draw near to him, and to allow him to reveal himself to you from his word. Just like we've been looking at it today from Psalm 46, where God reveals to us these awesome truths about his help and trouble, and that we can count on him, and that even when all the world is going through all the upheavals of the tribulation, and even when all the armies of the Antichrist are surrounding the city of Jerusalem, even then God will help his people and so we can count on to help us in the meantime, in the things that we're going through right now. So know that he is God. Know your God better than ever before. Know him, know who he is, know what he has promised to you. And in that revelation of himself, be still. Quiet yourself before the Lord. Because twice in this psalm, he encourages us, and I want to just end with this, verse 11, the Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Believer, God is with you. He is your refuge in a time of trouble. And so I want to encourage you today as we have learned from Psalm 46, know who your God is, that he is your refuge and your strength, your very present help in trouble. And on that basis, Decide, I will not fear. Rather, I'm going to be still and know that he is God. God bless you. We'll look forward to seeing you Sunday morning at 1045 at church. And until then, you have a wonderful weekend. I'm praying for all of our church family. I want you to know I love you all. And we'll see you again soon.